My today's guest is Mark Indyk, photographer from Los Angeles who spent 42 years in the motion picture industry. He worked for 15 years as a location manager that gave him a love of photography and a unique perspective on the landscape, learning how to tell a story about each location in a few images. Enjoy. Mark, good morning. So nice to have you here. I'm so sorry, it's so early for you. I know, I know, but uh, yeah, this that's the time zones beauty, right? We we always have to find the time. Like, uh, how are you doing this morning? Like many photographers, I'm a very early riser, so no problem. <laughs> well, that's true, right? We we get trained. Yeah, so nice to 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 see you. You know, we we have been in touch for for it's a few years right now. Now, right, I think you know to through, through the. Frames group, we look into images, wonderful, wonderful photographs, really. I would like to start with, with a, you send a note my, my, my way, you know, your, your short biography note. And I can see you worked in the, in the motion picture industry. So you worked with companies like, uh, like Disney, Miramax, you know, Universal. So you were very close to moving pictures. Now, yeah. today we are talking still photography. So it, it's, it's an extremely interesting, you know, uh, cross point here for me. And I would like to know. What do you think, how, how all those years in the moving picture industry influenced or are influencing still, you know, the, this, this still photography, which you, you are so enjoying these years? Do, do you see a link, connection there? Very much so, but I had a, I had a very unusual job. There's not many people who, who do what I did at the beginning. My, my first 15 years in movies was as a location scout, a location manager. And there's maybe a, a thousand people on earth to do this job. And very few, fewer still do it for large movies. So your job was to go find a location that not only matched the uh, description and action in the script, but something that really was cinematic, was visible, that told the story just by its presence, whether it was a farm or a building or a town. And so I traveled a lot all over the world doing this. and. I had to learn how to tell a story in one image, or at least in those days, it was a, you know, you took panoramas and digital's made it a lot easier, but I was doing this in the 70s. So, uh, I learned, I learned where to stand. Literally, I, I feel like the, to me, the best description of finding something to shoot is knowing where to stand. And. I had to learn that because I had to send the pictures every day to the director, the production designer, and, uh, you know, get an approval or a decline mm -hmm. on a location and uh, keep going. And that really, even though from uh, 1990 until 10 years ago, I graduated from doing that into uh, more of a producing uh, studio executive production managing role. I still have it in me, and I couldn't wait to actually get tired to devote my time to still photography, which I did 10 years ago. Okay, so one thing is, this is actually, I didn't think about it, right? Because I, I noticed it later. Yeah, you worked as a location manager. I said, great point. So you, yeah, you, you were looking for those locations, so you know, exactly places, where to stand, where to film from, right? And uh, you have the vantage points. So this is one part of this equation, I think. And I feel the other part is, I mean, I can imagine you were working up front, you know, at those movie productions. But then I, I can imagine you watched a couple of movies in your life as well. Just so, a, just a few. <laughs> so now the, the the moving part, you know, the, the moving picture itself. And now I you sent some images my way right before this recording. And uh, when I'm looking at your images, at least those you sent me, they are rather, you know, quiet, static in nature. Is it something you you kind of you think were missing when when <laughs> when looking at all those movies and now and then started looking for a for a counterpart? I w I would say that uh, it was really fun to scout for movies and to you have to understand that the director might be three thousand miles away, so I'm sending him the best angle of this location, and then everything gets ruined when the movie company shows up. <laughs> you know, all the trucks and they redecorate it and, and they paint it and change it. And, you know, it was a, working on movies very difficult. And I wanted to get back to just me at the location, me at the frame, the picture. And I was very, you know, tired 
uh, of working 16 hours a day, 20 hours a day, seven days a week, away from home for a year at a time. And I just wanted to be able to choose what I wanted to see. But I worked also with some of the great cinematographers on Earth. Did I learn from them? Uh, reveal a couple of names. Who, who did you work with? This is fascinating. Well, Gordon Willis was uh, considered the best, the great cinematographer of New York, you know, New York City. He did, you know, The Godfathers, Manhattan, you know, did, you know, Woody Allen movies. I'm having a, 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 a senior moment when I think of uh, what one of the other great ones who I did The Village with, and I can't remember his name all of a sudden. Just an amazing... He- yeah, we will, we'll, we'll find it. You know, we'll Google it. <laughs> I yeah. don't know myself, so I will have to check, right? He was my actually biggest influence because his okay. whole thing was framing and peace, quiet, and a quiet camera. And um, he he was also a still photographer. And we the movie that I did with him was about Amish. So it was all about the framing of these Amish buildings and the people. The very still and quiet camera. And I, I learned a lot from him. So when scouting those locations for the movies, you were already back then, you know, taking pictures of those places, photographing them? Yes. When did this develop into your photography passion, your own? At first, it was only documenting, I can imagine, right? When did you notice that, something, that it is something more, you know, which you would like to pursue? Okay, so I, I, when I became an executive, a production executive at the Walt Disney Company, they had a very large location department where they keep files. This is way before it did. And um, I was going on a vacation to Spain and Portugal, and, they, and I, I, had, I put my camera down when I stopped scouting. And the, the head of the department begged me, she said, we don't have any files on Spain or Portugal, could you just bring a camera, take some pictures for our files. And I said, really? you know, that sounds like a busman's holiday to me. You know, I want to be free to just explore. And she talked to me and she said, Disney will pay for the film. They'll pay for the processing. I said, okay. So I, I took my, you know, my old uh, 35 millimeter uh, uh, Nikon and I figured I'd take five rolls of film, you know, and I'd satisfy her requirements. I came back with 35 rolls of film. But the thing, that put over, the thing that put it over the top for me is also something very few people remember. Prior to Photoshop, there were, there were two labs in LA, two one-hour, like one-hour labs. They had a machine the size of a refrigerator. You put your film strip in there, your negative, and it was a chemical Photoshop. In other words, you put your film strip in, and then they had all these dials and controls where you could zoom in, rotate, change the color balance, and so on, simple things, and press a button. And about five minutes later, a print, an 8 by 10 print would nah. battle with. And I, and I, was, I was just, I, I was locked in. I, was, I would stay there for eight hours a day just playing with <laughs> prints because it was, so, it. it was so different than handing it over to a lab and just getting something back. I could control it. And that's what put me over the top to want to get back into photography. So it was a combination of travel, location experience, and the tools to do the editing myself without a dark room. Yeah. So you just said to get back. So it means you did do it, you know, when, when, when being, you know, a kid, a teenager already? No, no, I really, I really, I took some fire from lessons as a teenager, uh, the dark room lessons, you know. The chemical, I, you know, I wasn't really into it, but I loved it. Mm-hmm. I, Photoshop was waiting for me, although I don't use Photoshop much now. It's molded, mostly all Lightroom. Yeah. Get that, the power to do everything with the picture except make the frame is what yeah. really turned me on. Now let's look at some of your images today. You know, you sent some, like 20 of them my way. Uh, so what I'm seeing mainly is architectural things, the... In some interior shots, cityscapes, not so many human beings in the in the images. What what is it that fascinates you the most these days? I don't I don't like taking pictures of people. I don't 
really like interacting with people that much. Uh, I had a rough. Oh, so sorry. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> when I was when I was working on movies, as you know, like the unit production manager, I'd be in charge of crews from five hundred to a thousand people, and I wanted to get away from all that. I wanted to get away yeah. from all those trucks. Can imagine, yeah. But also, I feel portraits lie. You know, they're they're either staged or. Uh, people doing something and not they're not even knowing they're being photographed. I th you could take pictures of serial killers and you couldn't, you couldn't tell the difference between a normal person and a serial killer in a lot of portraits. But I feel the things that people leave behind, the things that people create, have more resonance to me as a as a somebody who's trying to put an image out there. I like people to study as if some people would study the crags in someone's faces or their bent nose, I, I get the same feeling from looking at a building or a, you know, a farm or something like that. Let's ask. Or a town square. So let's look at two particular images, you know, I, I chose from, from the set you, you, you sent. So the first one is a, it's a photograph of a Vincent Thomas bridge. Is it, where, where is it? Where is the bridge? It's uh, part of Los Angeles, a place called San Pedro. It's the biggest bridge in LA. It's uh, probably the only, I think it's the only one that crosses water. It's, uh, isn't it very similar to, to Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge in New York? Uh, or, or is poor, it just the... Poor, a poor architectural facsimile, but in the right light, it looks great. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, it's one wonderful image. I mean, I love it's kind of... Uh, Again, you can tell me now, did you work much on this image in, in post-processing or was it was it that foggy, that cloudy, you know, it's a beautiful kind of almost like an impressionistic, right, kind of image, just, yeah. just wonderful. Even though I waxed eloquently about Photoshop and Lightroom, like the fact of the matter is I use them very little to post-process. I, I, you know, generally will, will uh, you know, straighten the image or balance the colors. I, I want to get back to what I saw when I was there. And the camera get, sometimes gets in the way of that and the digital file gets away in that. So I really just want to get back to that. In this case, I was doing a very long project about the 88 cities that make up Los Angeles County and the tribalism that results from how these cities have been formed and evolved. And I was headed to... Uh, Catalina to photograph the city of Avalon, uh, which is what, even though it's on an island off the coast of California, it's still part of LA County. And I was leaving before dawn on a, on a catamaran. And while waiting for the ship to board, I took this picture and it was very foggy and the sun was just coming up. But I did a little filtering in Photoshop to give it a little push and push in that direction. What was it? What was it you you know, or what is it you would like to convey with this kind of image? Is it like, a, was it early morning here, or was it just it was just one morning? I was trying to convey the majesty of it, and like I said, to me, that structure is as important as a face to describe the human condition. You know what? How did that bridge get built? What is it used for? How many people died making that bridge? Look at how the light affects that bridge. And also, going back to my roots, wouldn't a, wouldn't a cinematographer love to film that bridge, make a scene, do a scene in a movie on that bridge, or under it? I want to, so exactly. I think this this kind of movie background and you know, influences, they are shining through here as well. I mean, it's like a wonderful movie scene. It could be an opening of a, of a movie or something like that, right? So absolutely lovely image. I mean, again, one of those images, I, I say it often, print it a bit bigger, you know, hang it somewhere on the on the wall. Just would look wonderful. The second one, you can see my printer in the background. I have printed it very large, and it's hanging in my house at the moment. Okay, here you go. <laughs> the second one, a, a bit slightly different location, right? Chengkan in China. I love the image. This is you know the it's kind of just one of those graphical shots. You know, different elements, very strong graphical you know power coming through. The, the red signs, they're on the wall, right? Yes. It means, it means uh, uh, basically it means I love my country, more or less. I've been married to two Chinese women, unfortunately passed away. 
And, uh, you know, my, my wife at the time was with me on this trip and you haven't asked this question yet, but basically the reason I, w I just like stopped in my tracks when I saw this, the three things, the three things that I kind of my checklist first is subject matter, right? Something echoes in my brain or this is, it was almost almost in my brain before I saw it in real life, real life, and when I see it, I just stop. So, and then composition. So, even moving an inch or two in any direction will completely change the composition. So, I really work hard composing in the camera. Maybe I'll leave a little bit of room so when I straighten it, I don't lose the composition. And then third, third, and a distant third is lighting because the lighting oftentimes isn't great. I want to shoot all day long. You know, when I'm out shooting, it's 10, 12 hours a day. I don't want to go in, you know, in the middle of the day, go into a hotel room and not shoot. Yeah. So I, I just look for th like things against buildings like this, maybe to shoot when the light is not great. And so this, this particular image, you know, checked all the boxes for me. I just couldn't I couldn't believe how beautiful the composition was. I don't have to change anything. It's looks, it looks like somebody set it up for me, but that's the magic. Nobody did. Yeah, and also I can absolutely see the, the, your precision, you know, and, and when it comes to, to exactly the composition is the composition of the scene is one thing. The, the composition of the photograph is the photographer's uh, skill, right? So it's like for me, it's I, I can see you you nailed it like to the millimeter here, and I love the fact that the whole kind of gravity in this picture is to the left a little bit, right? Because of the clothes or whatever it is hanging on the wall. It's just perfect. And the lighting, I mean, it's such a pleasing lighting, probably, probably some kind of a, maybe, oh, you know, a shadowy area or maybe the, maybe the day was overcast in general. Yeah. It works what? perfect for this kind of scene, right? No, no brutal contrast and so on. It's just all about colors, lines, patterns. Yeah, just, I love it. I don't know if any, but I don't know if you've heard this. I think it's been around for a long time that the definition of a painting, addition, definition of photography is subtraction, right? So, so a painting, you have a, a blank canvas, you add to it. In photography, you want to subtract all the distractions. Absolutely. So that's, what, that's what I try to do. And I don't want to know what was to the left and to the right of this, right? <laughs> By the way, this is a very crowded tourist city. It's Can't imagine, small. right? Yeah, but that, like, that's the yeah, that's the that's the skill, that's the beauty of you know exactly you know excluding you know and I mean including only what we want to have in the frame and I mean this, this image is just it's great it's great Mark yeah well thank you so much uh, uh, you know tell tell us a little maybe a little bit about what are you do you have any projects going on right now in a series or kind of subject matters you you are exploring i try to take i try to take uh, my my photography is location based so i and i try to take at least four five six trips a year uh some international some domestic i mean the covid covid obviously changed the dynamic but i just got back i did a, a photo study of acadiana which is the heart of cajun country in louisiana and I, I really have a passion for small town America, rural in America and how it's changing. Um, and so uh, my next project will probably be the interior of Maine, which people don't are not aware is the most rural country in the United States, even though it's an eastern eastern state. So that'll be my next project probably in June. And I'm always looking for play, new places to go. I, I've been fortunate enough between my personal life, my photography life, and my movie life to have traveled all 50 states many times over and 55 countries. And I just, I don't run 10 months topic. Wow, wonderful. So any, any specific countries still on your... Including your Poland. Poland, Switzerland? To have been to, yes. Wonderful. Yes. So, any particular countries still on your bucket list? I wanted to do all the Baltic countries. I was ready to do that in 2020 when the pandemic hit, and all of that canceled. Well, now also not the 
most stable region right now. Let's 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 see what's happening. But let's not, let's not get into it, you know. But I mean, definitely this kind of play. I haven't been much or almost not, you know. I come originally from Poland. I haven't been to the east really. So I I would love to also do you know similar trip one day. Uh, Mark, thank you so much uh, for for you know taking us so early your morning. I mean, yeah. Fortunately, exactly, we are photographers, so it's not so brutal. Uh, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. is a kind of decent, right? <laughs> it's just a little, I, 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 I thank you for what you're doing for photography, for photographers, and uh, it's brilliant. Yeah, thanks. It's the best, it's the best uh, outlet venue uh, out there for photographers, and I really salute you. Thank you so much. This video is about you. We will be releasing it very, very soon. You know, I will be linking to, to whatever you send my way. And uh, yeah, so people can, can see more of your work, you know, online. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mark. Have a wonderful day. You too, Tomasz. Yeah. Take care. Thank you.